Hey, it's Adam from Judo Scale, and I want to show you how to get set up with Judo Scale on Heroku. So here I have a Heroku application with a couple processes, a web process and a worker process. In this case, it happens to be a Ruby on Rails application. It could be a Django Flask application or a Node application. It doesn't matter. They all work the same on Judo Scale. But in this demo, uh, we're going to walk through it with a Rails application. And the first thing that we're going to need to do is install the Judo Scale add-on. You can do it from the Judo Scale, or, sorry, from the Heroku UI here, but you can also do it from the uh, command line, and that's actually how we're going to do it in this demo. So I'm going to bounce over to my terminal, where I already have the Heroku CLI installed. So I just need to type Heroku add-ons create Judo Scale. And that's going to install the add-on and it's going to print out a message that kind of tells me how to open the add-on. And that's the next step we want to do is open the add-on. So I'm going to copy that and paste it. And that's going to launch Judo Scale in my browser and it's going to sign me in. And then I can see my two processes here, each running a single dyno. And let's set up auto scaling on our web dyno. Now, the first thing Judo Scale is going to ask us is a few questions about our tech stack, the kind of web server we're running, and if we have a background jobs uh, processor going. And it needs this so it can give us the right instructions to install the adapter. So I'm going to tell it that I'm running a Ruby on Rails application with Sidekick. And now I get those instructions. Of course, these instructions would be different if I selected a Python or a Node application. For a Rails application, I'm just going to copy these two lines and paste them into my gem file. And then I can run bundle to install those gems. And then we just need to commit and deploy those changes. And I went ahead and did that off camera so we didn't need to wait for it here. And I'm back in Judo scale after uh, committing and deploying those changes. And now when I say um, finished and deployed. Judo Scale recognizes that we've set up the adapter and we're good to go. But of course, there's nothing interesting happening in here yet. And that's because our app doesn't have any traffic. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no throughput, there's no queue time. So this isn't very exciting yet. So let's actually send some traffic to this application. I'm going to open the app, and this is just a sample app that we've built that lets us fire a bunch of requests and configure how long they, t they take and makes it easy to force request queue time and test auto scaling in this kind of way. So I'm just going to fire a bunch of these requests off. Each of these requests take a second, and I've configured this particular app to be single threaded, single process. So it can only handle one request at a time. And so since I sent those requests, uh, you know, more than one per second, that's going to cause some request queuing. Let's close a bunch of these tabs that I just opened up, hop into Judo Scale, and we can see how our queue time spiked up there, and we got a little bit of throughput there as well, and then came back down. So that's exactly what we want to see. We didn't scale up because we haven't enabled that yet. So let's actually, let's, let's turn auto scaling on. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in here. We're just going to fire a bunch of these requests. And again, each of these requests is going to take a second. And with a single threaded server, this is going to cause some request queuing for sure. And now we'll bounce over to Judo Scale to see if it's recognized those stats. And we can see the queue time spike there. We can see we're at two dynos now. And that second dyno just started creeping in the edge of this chart here. They kind of stack up like servers. And in about 10 minutes, it's going to scale back down because we're not sending in any traffic anymore. But instead of waiting for that, let's actually go over and check out our worker dynos. So again, we don't have anything in our queues, so there's nothing exciting to see here. But we can actually do the same thing. We have some jobs and we can, you know, and queue a batch of 10 jobs just so we can see some queue latency. I'm going to refresh this latency is up to about five seconds. And we'll see this pop up in Judo Scale. We can see how the queue time popped up there. Again, let's actually enable auto scaling so that we can see it in action. And in this case, we couldn't enable auto scaling yet, and we've got an error. So let's dive in. 
Right, we didn't actually select which cues we want JudoScale to monitor. Now for worker dynos, JudoScale needs to know which cues are assigned to each process for monitoring. You can imagine some applications have you know, 10 cues, 20 cues, with multiple different worker processes processing different cues. And so this is where we need to tell JudoScale which processes map to which cues. Also, we might have some lower priority cues that we don't want to trigger auto scaling. So this is where all that happens. We go in here and we just tell JudoScale, yes, we want the default queue to be monitored for auto scaling in this process. And now we can save and enable auto scaling and we can queue some more jobs. In this case, let's queue up 50 jobs. And if I refresh this again, we can see our latency start to creep up. In fact, it's just going to keep on creeping up as it's kind of working through all those jobs. And if we go over to Judo Scale and wait a few seconds, we can already see the queue time starting to spike up. And in just a few seconds, we will see this scale number jump to two dinos. And there, our scale number jumped to two dinos. We don't quite see it reflected in the chart yet because it's just off, off the edge here, but in just a second, we'll see that, that second dino show up on the edge there. And there it kind of shows up. So worker auto scaling works just like web auto scaling, but instead of request queue time, we're dealing with job queue time or queue latency. And it's gonna work the same in Ruby, Python, Node, uh, whatever. Now you can also tweak your auto scaling um, with a bunch of other configuration options. I'm going to cover that in a separate video, but in the meantime, if you need help, hop up to the um, top of the application here in the header, click the help menu. You can check out our documentation, shoot us an email. We'll get back to you within a day and you can even schedule a call with us. We're happy to hop on a screen share with you to work out any issues or questions that you've got. So that's all for today. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time.